Boy, this sure would look pretty with them roller rockers on there, wouldn't it? But if I put those on, I have to buy a new set of valve covers because they don't have enough clearance. As you can see, there's a gap right there. So it will be going back with the stock roller rocker, with the stock stamped rockers. And I'm sure these would gain me a little tiny bit of power, but it would only show up on a dyno. You couldn't tell it sitting in the car. I had to make a modification to the intake with dropping this down about a half an inch to where she cross flows a little better. And then the only other thing I got to figure out is if I want to run that Elder Brock or if I want to run the Quadra Jet. I like Quadra Jets. They will flow six, 750. Let me get that right. 750 CFM. That Elder Brock I got over there is only a 600 or maybe a 650. I've got another one that I could put on here that is a 750. But I just like the way a Quadra Jet works. The problem is, it's a new ethanol gas doesn't like the quadra jets so creates one of them little kind of situations and yes i said that word on purpose all right on to the video for things to look check and watch out for when changing from a flat type of cam to a roller cam we will be back in a minute Okay, one of the things you got to watch is, as you can see, the difference in the height of the roller rocker and the flat tapping lifter. Roller rocker lifters, and which have a tie bar, are taller than the flat tapping. So, there's the difference there. Second thing, always dip your rockers, I keep saying rockers, your lifters in oil. Soak that wheel, this one right here, before you put it in, it will drop right into place. Now the other thing is, since that lifter is taller, you have to get a shorter push rod. And you can buy these. These come from Howard's Cams. That is basically the difference between the height of, this is for a flat tappet, this is for the roller rocker. It's pretty straightforward and simple. just drop her in. That is step one. I'm going to remove all these pretty roller rockers and put on the stock ones and then I will show you something that I'd never seen before but I know that there's a lot of people that have and maybe you're one of those that haven't on how to adjust the valves without going through the whole ordeal of rotating the engine 180 degrees or 360 degrees adjust one set of valves certain ones and then turn it another 360 degrees and adjust all those valves that were left by the book be back now, I take and use my assembly lube, same stuff I used on the bearings, put some on one end, a little more than what I need, take the rest, put it on the other end. And it doesn't take a lot of assembly lube, just a little bit. You're just making a film so that when it first fires up, everything isn't dry. Okay. As I was saying, 
Garrick is where I learned this at, Vice Grip Garage. Never heard of it before, but hey, I'm always up for new tricks. Now, as you can see, this one is up, but it doesn't matter. You turn this till you feel friction on that rock arm. See, it's moving up and down. Once you get all that slack out, you stop. Still got a hair left. Right there. You can't push, turn the push rod anymore. You're there. And the push rod will move from side to side. See? Same with this one. We're just going to pull it around so you can't turn the push rod anymore. Even though you've lubricated it, it'll still stop once you get enough pressure on it. Right there. Now we're going to just do all the rest of them like that. I already ran these all down once. I just took the slack out, most of the slack out. I'm sure you can't see through my hand there. Right there. Right there. Right there. That's it right there. That's it right there. And I'm probably completely out of the camera view. Of course. Alright, I just did all these. Do these now. And one more little note. I don't know that you can see it. I want to pick you up here for a quick second. See these nuts? How they're rounded towards the top? rounded part is the part that always goes to the top. The flat side goes down. Put them in backward. Well, take them out. Okay, we've adjusted all these to zero lash. That means they won't return at all. And now we give it half a turn. And we go back through, and everything that's gotten loose, I don't know if you can see that. That one's now loose. That one's snug. That one's still snug. That one's still snug. That one's a little loose. And we take all of these down to zero lash again. idea is that once you got them all down to zero lash that one's tight now that one this one here a whole bunch
right. And just for the fun of it, we're going to do this four more times. Okay, and I almost forgot to tell you, make sure you put a little oil in each rocker. It's pretty lube it. I was just going and I went ahead and did it beforehand and then thought about it afterwards. If you've never done this, you, some people even use assembly lube. I just put a little bit of oil on there just to make sure everything will be lubricated when you start cranking it over and stuff. Okay, one more thing. You got these. Or you can just run a bead of silicone. I used to run a bead of silicone, except for I don't like that the silicone squishes out and ends up, some of it ends up inside the block. I don't like this type because it's got a rib on the top and a rib on the bottom. See that? And it seems to just push itself out. So, what I do, is I get this set in there, right? Put your, sorry about that, battery went dead. Okay, and then you take your ends, and you just set them in place. You just put a small film of silicone right on this top of this rail. Put your dab of silicone on the underside, not the top. Do not put your gaskets on here. Take your intake manifold and just set it on top. These will not move so long as you don't move around your intake manifold. And let the weight of the intake, you can set the carburetor and shit on top of it, I don't care. But just let the weight of the intake push this all down. Let this silicone set up and these will not go anywhere. At least they shouldn't and if this is the end like share I don't know where share is at it's down there too and subscribe ring the bell tell somebody else you know maybe I'll have something that'll interest you and maybe you actually learned something today thanks for watching bye Okay, you see I got the intake sitting on top of there. I have it's gonna set overnight, but you can see it's it's only sticking out in a couple of little places. But if you let that silicone sit down sit up, it should stay right exactly where it's at. You can see in the back you got the same thing. You'll always have a spot or two that's gonna stick out. But if this doesn't work. Well, I'll do another video on, don't do that. But before I do that, oh, like I say, leave the gasket out. You can see there's a gap in there. It's on both sides. All the weight is being put right on the front and right on the back, holding this thing down. As long as you don't go sliding it forward and backward. Okay, I said I'd be back to show you. As you can see, the gasket's still in place. It hasn't moved. I have not removed the intake manifold since I put it on the other night. It has sat here with the carburetor and everything on it. The manifolds aren't terribly heavy. As you can see the gasket's not moving. So, let's lift this thing off of here. Now, let's take the carburetor off. And then we will lift off the intake. see how we are. Those are not 
going anywhere. You can see they're not moving. All it takes is gluing them down, prepping the surface. You break clean, clean off the surfaces. No oil, no residue, no nothing on that. Put down your thin coat of silicone, not a thick heavy one. Dab it into the corners underneath. Not on the inside here. Put that on, set the intake on it. It will hold everything in place. These should not slip out. Now, for a regular garage that's in a hurry to get everything done, this is not the way to go. Because you don't have the time to let these things set up. I'm going to say overnight is the best because it really allows the silicone to set up. I used to do something like this similar on AMC's. When I was working, my boss used to get aggravated, but... You know, I'm like, hey, got a choice. You either let me do it my way, and it will not be back leaking. Or, I do it your way, and if it comes back leaking, I'm not going to pay for it. He let me do it my way, and I never had one come back leaking. And AMC six cylinders were notorious. Notorious. Yeah, notorious for leaking. Now, I didn't do it like this. I did it a little bit different because they had a different gasket. But I would seal the gasket to the cover. Set it down, set something on top of it. Let it set for an hour or two. It would set up, get sticky enough to where it wouldn't move. Flip it over, silicone the other side. Set it on, stick a couple bolts in it, push it down just enough to hold it in place. I'd usually take one of my manuals or two of my manuals and just set on top of it. Let the weight hold it in place. After an hour or two, come back and then finish the job. What would normally be a our job max taking everything off and putting it back together on something like that i turned into a four-hour job but my boss never had to eat the job because it leaked i never had one come back leaking i've got my own little tricks to doing things i did it for 40 plus years and I found ways that work for me. This is one of them. I've done the silicone, and when you put an intake on, you set it down, it always ends up that you move it back and forth a little bit. It never fails. It's going to happen because you got to get the bolt holes aligned. That's when you start pushing the silicone back and forth. A lot of times you'll never get a leak, but sometimes you will. I'm going to say it's 75, 25. 75% of the time, no leak. 25% of the time, you'll have a leak. And then you'll be wondering, is it the oil sending unit? Is it the remain seal? And you're going to be fighting it.